the Commodore Amiga still stands as one of the most loved computers of all time. But did you know you can link two of them up using the serial port? Well, in today's video, we're going to show just that. We'll demonstrate how to make the cable for cheap and test out some Amiga games with it. The good and the bad. So go grab a cup of tea and welcome to Team Panthori. Subscribble. To get our Amigas connected, we'll be needing a DB25 female-to-female -female ribbon cable. They can be found for under $10, but the reason we chose this particular one is that hopefully it'll be very easy to modify. This cable has identical outputs on each end, but for an Amiga null modem cable to work, some of these need to be changed. Using a small flathead screwdriver, we can remove this plastic casing. And there's also this piece of plastic that we can remove fairly easily. You are screwing like a pro. There we go. Yeah. We can see that each wire is being punctured, and that feeds into the DB25 connector. If we check online, we can find schematics of how the null modem can be connected, but this is very complicated and not what we need. The jackpot of all places can be found on Wikipedia. Scrolling through the null modem page, there is an entry for no hardware handshaking, which is exactly what we need. And only three wires need to be connected, with the receive and transmit pins reversed. Transmit and receive are pins 2 and 3. We can find which they are by counting how many holes across they are on the connector. So from above, it would be wires 3, which is the orange one, and 5, which is the green one. This only needs to be changed on one end of the cable, but let's get to it. We need to separate those wires, and by using this little screwdriver, we can break the glue that connects them. Once we get a large enough hole, we'll be able to pull it out. So we can just get this orange one. Nah, close enough. Now for the green wire. We'll be switching this green for the orange by simply lining it up and pushing it towards the pin. It doesn't need to look very neat. We just need to make sure that each pin lines up correctly. And now we can reseat the plastic cover. Then finish up with a bit of a squeeze. Now that the cable is pretty much done, we can use a multimeter to check for continuity. All is good here, so let's try with the Amigas. Meow. We'll be connecting the Amiga 600 to our A1200. Both are accelerated and they're using RGB to HDMI so we can use modern displays. We'll be joined by Vix in Japan, who also grew up with an Amiga. We've been friends for a few years, and she has a couple of YouTube channels too, so if you want to delve into some more Amiga shenanigans, skateboardery, or want to know which classic Japanese games can be played easily, please check her out. Each of the games were booted using WHD load, and some of them needed additional settings made, but honestly, it's pretty much plug and play. We're going to go through some of the games we tried out, and give our thoughts on each of them as a link-up title. First up, Hard Driving 2. And it's obvious from the title. It's a 3D driving simulator, but it's difficult to control. Knights of the Sky provided us with a World War I era dogfight. It played fairly well, but didn't provide much depth. His leading lap, a very smooth running 3D F1 racer. It does play quite well, but as Black Legend became bankrupt while developing this, we were left with half a finished game. Vicky also found that we could adjust graphic settings in the pause menu, but cranking these up to high doesn't really make the game any more playable, as a track with only two cars feels quite bare. I always found Overdrive pretty fun to play, especially in single player mode with the career option, but as these are quite early games, the multiplayer link up option was more of an afterthought. As such, it doesn't feel like an intense battle, but a barren circuit devoid of life. If they could have added an extra couple of AI cars, this would have been a solid game. Stunt Car Racer provided the thrill of a roller coaster as a racing car game. It can be difficult for new players to pick up and play, but once you know how the car handles, it becomes a solid link-up game. The FPS seems a bit on the slow side, 
But if you want to play this title, there's Stunt Car Racer, the TNT pack, which smooths out the frame rate and also adds new tracks. Lowest Turbo Challenge 2 is an amazing two-player split screen game, but with Link Up, it supports four-player, two on each machine. This right here is the top tier of Amiga Link Up Gaming. Here's what Vicky thinks. I'm not really one to allow nostalgia to cloud my views on games. That's why you won't find me raving about Xenon 2. But games like Lotus Turbo Challenge 2 and Stunt Car Racer still remain games that I love to play on the Amiga. And the link up cable support via Null Modem is something that really enhances these two games beyond the great status. It makes them legendary, in fact. The head to head play was awesome. And I learned something new that I didn't even know back in the day that Lotus Turbo Challenge 2 supports four players via this method just awesome and highly recommended thank you for that and also for giving a hand some may wonder why we didn't add super skid marks well it was running pretty slow and we ran out of time here's a big thank you to all of those on our patreon and if you too want to help keep our lights turned on you can do so for the price of a cheap coffee if you made it this far thank you and please hit that like button if you enjoy this type of content whack the subscribe button we have many more videos that may interest you this has been me chicken of team pandori and i'll catch you on the next one Ta-ra. Intergalactic Space Pimp.